Hey, are you creating boundaries out of fear or out of love? Makes a big difference. So today we're going to be talking about seven do's and seven don'ts for creating boundaries. And we're hoping that we start to move down the path of creating boundaries out of love. They're yeah. a lot better that way. So stick around. We'll see you in there. Hi guys. Hey. Welcome back. I wrote this podcast about a month ago mm -hmm. and I'm like so excited to share it with you because I think it's just simple and things that you can apply to your life and these are in response to um, people's questions about boundaries. So mm -hmm. in our academy, Mennonite Catholic Academy, we did an entire month on boundaries with others. Mm -hmm. Um, we're now in the month of boundaries with time with like, so if you're interested in boundaries, check out the Academy, but, um, a lot of questions have come up about boundaries cause we did an entire month on it. And so today we're going to be talking about the seven do's and the seven don'ts of boundary creation. Mm -hmm. And a little example of a boundary that my wife just reinforced with me this morning was <laughs> I sat down and she said, Matt, you smell like a diner. Yes. Now. He some people might take that. Some people might take that as a compliment. I certainly uh, enjoy sitting in diners. But the boundary she put was, "I will not film this podcast with you until you change your shirt." Mm -hmm. And so I did, uh, and I still and have unfortunately it. hasn't worked. I brushed my teeth too, <laughs> so like in mouthwash and everything. So I might just have to. Jump it's in. okay. Stuff gets in your pores. It does. It seeps right in. I used to work in a pizza place slash deli slash. Um, diner, so I, I get it. That would be my dream oh if my, my wife smelled like it's pizza. Delicious, too. like two of my favorite things. But it does my get wife old. And yes. pizza mm -hmm. all together, <laughs> smashed together in my pores. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about boundaries. Yes, boundaries. What are boundaries, Matt? Uh, really, I, I like to think of them as property lines. Mm -hmm. Okay, the church is bi big on private property. There's something very important about private property rights uh, that have to do with personal dignity, personal mm -hmm. responsibility, people creating value, people mm -hmm. acknowledging where they end and somebody else begins. It's really important to this exchange of gift and receiving somebody else's gift. And I love looking at it that way because sometimes people can think of boundaries as something that is like, I'm isolating myself. Have a negative association. Yeah, like yeah. it's there's an isolationism. Yeah. There's a there's kind of a, a rugged individualism that's mm -hmm. there where it's just me and it's it's narcissistic. Mm -hmm. But but really what boundaries do is they protect the the, the self gift uh, and they allow us to enter a place of self possession. Yeah, they protect something worth protecting, mm -hmm. something of value. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't always mean that that protection is coming from a place of fear or reaction or, I don't know, like anger. Mm -hmm. It it means that like defensiveness, this yeah. is something that is worth protecting. I mean, I think of modesty mm -hmm. as a boundary, right? right? Like wearing modest clothing, like my, my body is beautiful and it's supposed to be revered. So there is a protection of that. Yeah. I think of the altar rail. Mm -hmm. in the in a church as a boundary saying now you're entering into the sanctuary this is a space and and we're mm -hmm. here not to it, it's there to preserve the reverence the proper reverence for that space i think the the fact that we lock our tabernacle doors there being a boundary that's there and so even even locks on our on our on our homes right you're, mm -hmm. we're, we're protecting a boundary we're preserving uh something that is that is important to us and a value to us yeah and so really what a lot of people will ask is how do i set a boundary mm -hmm. and i think we, we take all of these physical boundaries that we see, mm -hmm. property lines, you know, like I was saying, modesty, clothing, um, and how do we apply it to this invisible world of our emotions, right? Mm -hmm. Our emotional boundaries with other people because they are invisible. And so um, whenever I'm working with somebody ab about boundaries in coaching, I always um, like try to make it tangible for mm -hmm. them. And I'm going to talk about that. It's a little stick figure picture. We don't have a picture of it right now, but mm -hmm. we will kind of help you paint a mind picture. You have an imagination. Yes. We're going to exercise it. Yeah, but um, it, it helps kind of uh, mix it incarnational, mm -hmm. right? It helps sure. it make it tangible. Conceptualize it, yes. Mm -hmm. 
So a lot of people don't know that boundaries begin with other people with our thoughts and our emotions. So mm -hmm. they immediately go to like the physical, right? Like how do I create a boundary in my action line or in my behavior line? If you guys know, are you familiar with us talking about the model and the CBT model, really? Mm -hmm. Like the thoughts lead to emotions, which lead to actions. Yeah. As in when I see yeah. this person do this action, then, you know, I want to stop that action from taking place. So that's mm -hmm. creating a boundary that's in like the action line that we're right. talking about. You're trying to stop somebody's behavior or change somebody's behavior or say how you're going to respond when somebody yes. acts a certain way. But the truth is, Boundaries begin at the thought because the thought is the cause of all of our emotions and all of our actions, mm -hmm. really. So, and this is just assuming, guys, that everybody that we're speaking to, this is a normalcy thing. Like, not everybody, some people might not have, act, like, complete control over their mm -hmm. body, right? We're talking about people who are healthy, who actually are operating and functioning yeah, with, in health. Yeah, healthy mental faculties. Yes. Yep. Okay, so boundaries start interiorly first. That was a very long way for me to get to that sentence. They start in the interior life first. So when you're at asking that question, how do I set a boundary? I would respond and say, all right, well, we need to look at the thought first. Mm -hmm. And so if we go back to this image that we haven't really quite painted yet, we've got two stick figures. Just picture two stick figures on the paper and one is somebody else and one is you. All right. Mm -hmm. Then put a circle around each one of those stick figures. It doesn't overlap. They're just distinct stick figures inside distinct circles. Mm -hmm. And inside each one of those circles, the first circle, you have my thoughts, my emotions, my behaviors. And decisions. And my decisions. Yeah. And then the other person, they have their thoughts, their emotions, their behaviors, their decisions. Mm -hmm. And everything that's inside that circle is yours. Mm -hmm. And everything that's inside their circle is theirs. And where the boundaries get kind of muddy is when we think we have some sort of sway over the things in the other mm -hmm. person's circle. That's yes. what Erin's kind of been getting to. And she's tapping me saying, stop, you're going ahead in the notes. You are going way ahead in the notes. Okay, so do's and don'ts. Yeah, we have seven do's and seven don'ts to give you today yes. uh, to help you get those uh, boundaries and start them at that interior life. Okay, first do. Be clear on what your boundaries are. Seems pretty simple. Mm -hmm. um, I have clients come to me and they go, I don't know, has a boundary been crossed? And I go, I, I don't know. You tell me, has mm -hmm. a boundary been crossed? And that tells me that this boundary, which is a decision, it's a decision to protect something of value. It's not a reaction out of anger, but it is a decision to protect something of value. Only you can answer that. Right. And you need to be intentional about answering that. Mm -hmm. So be clear on what your boundaries are. Brings me to my second do, which is do understand your intentions and your reasons for setting this boundary mm -hmm. for for making this decision. We say this across the board for every decision you make, have reasons for it, have a good intention and redecide it. Right. Like give yourself that freedom to say, I'm going to redecide to do this again today. How often, Aaron, when you've been coaching somebody, have you, uh, you know, and you're helping them establish those healthy boundaries, has the conversation pivoted to, okay, what are the things that you value? Let's start there. Mm -hmm. Is that like, is that is that a common first step or a, a, a necessary first step before clarifying the things you value before you can even create the, the boundaries? Yeah, I, I think I would ask with the question why, okay. you know? Um, versus like, what do you value? But like, yeah, it's it's ultimately the same question. Why well, are we creating this boundary? Yeah, why are we creating this boundary? Mm -hmm. And I think you said in the beginning, we create boundaries to protect or preserve things that we or things that we value, right? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I, I, I we can we can protect things that aren't they, they don't really need protection or they don't have as much value as we think, yep. right? I mean, have, have you ever had a situation like that where you're coaching somebody and it's just like, okay, you're putting this boundary in place to protect what? And then finally they mm. realize that they're not really protecting anything worth protecting and mm -hmm. they're spending a lot of energy though, mm. uh, reinforcing this boundary and this, and, and it, it, for some reason it means something a lot more to them than it actually is. Yeah. And I think, I think 
down the line will answer that question. Okay. Because I think a lot of times it's protecting their own emotions. Ah. Yeah. That is interesting. And understanding where your emotions come from is really helpful because mm. then you may realize, oh, they don't really need protecting. Anyway. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I don't need to change the way that they think, feel, or act. That's or right. Choose. That is right. That's okay. theirs. So number three, do own your own thoughts emotions, actions, and decisions. Get used to saying these phrases out loud and to yourself. This is mine to own. Mm -hmm. I am feeling this way and this is mine to own. Or this is mine to do my own work on. I mean, this is so much of what we teach our clients in one-on-one -on -one coaching, but also in the academy is like, start by owning what is yours. Mm -hmm. What is in your locus of control. And that is your thoughts and that is your emotions yeah. and that is your decisions and that's your actions. This so. has been something that's actually been very helpful for our organization. So, uh, you know, we, mm. we have Abby uh, Dufresne on our team and regardless, there's always this, you're, you're, you're learning, you know, how to, how to operate as a team together. And uh, Abby had something she wanted to talk to me about recently and uh, she approached it where, where it's just like, hey, Matt, like, I want to journal about this first. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. so it wasn't just something where she was, but she, I, I knew there was something that she wanted to address, you know, maybe a deficiency that we could, could move forward with. But I, but when she said that it was just like, okay, first I want to, I want to own what's mine. Mm. You know, I recognize like there, there's something going on in me and before I just kind of like throw a boundary or an ultimatum out or like this needs to change, which is kind of a way of putting a boundary out there. Mm -hmm. or like I need you to do this in order for the operations to, to work better this way. Um, she kind of was like, I'm going to com commit to do my own work. And I tell you what, like it built such trust in me that she was going to really own mm -hmm. whatever it was and kind of do her work to kind of uh, as much as she could. So she's coming from a clean place mm. and saying, I'm aware of the thoughts that are behind perhaps this yeah. discrepancy I'm identifying. I'm choosing them, I'm owning them, or I'm presenting them to you just in, a, as they are. And this is what's this is how it's it's affecting me emotionally right now, which is how it's affecting my performance. Mm -hmm. And this is what I want to work with you on. Like, it's not saying the problem is you doing this, but the problem is this is my perception yeah. right now. And maybe what I could do to adjust, help adjust the perception is just we have a conversation, or there's something that I actually need to change to kind of Amen. you know conform to a, yeah. a, a, a more efficient reality. Yeah, which is such a core value of ours. Like, I mean, in our in in our business, it's take ownership of what's yours, yep. not only just your tasks, but your thoughts and your emotions. Yep. And then present it to the person. Like, that's the first step. Yeah, I love I one mean, of our core values of like never do the other person's work for them. Yes. See the person where they're at, mm -hmm. but never do their work for them. This phrase has changed our relationship, like how we talk to each mm -hmm. other too. Like, this is mind tone, right? Mm-hmm. And, um, and so here's what I'm, my promise is to you. I'm going to do my own work on this and then we'll have a discussion about this. Mm -hmm. So yeah, really helpful is that you're not reacting to one another. Um, do keep that picture that Matt painted for you of the two stick figures within the circles and each having their own thoughts, emotions, actions, and decisions within their own separate circles. Keep that in mind. It's a silly little visual but when you are starting to have that thought, oh, do I need to set a boundary? Just go, okay, here's mine over here. Here, like, what can I own over here? And what do they get to own over here? Mm -hmm. Just start with that picture. It's silly, but go back to it because it really, really helps, especially if you have the tendency to blend mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah, in preparation for this podcast, Aaron, mm -hmm. I actually fell back on this this morning. Oh, interesting enough. So an example of this. Okay, so uh, my daughter was was uh, and I we were making her lunch for school today, and as she was uh, zipping up her lunch bag, you know she's four years old, and you know how you want to get that zipper kind of nice and flush to each other for mm -hmm. a nice smooth zip. Well, she had the thing kind of opened, and it was not really uh, moving along very smoothly and so it's she just went Rah! she kind yes, of like I that me it. melancholic cleric yes and it was like okay so 
immediately when when I heard her scream, the reaction response in me was wanting to um, wanting to actually correct her for overreacting. It was like this thought of like you are overreacting, and so and, am I. And, <laughs> but it was also like, but then it was just like okay, so in her little circle. She is feeling frustration, mm -hmm. and in her action line, she's screaming, and perhaps the thought is, I can't get this right, okay? That's what, that's what was inside her little circle over here. What was inside my little circle was, I hear her screaming, I think I need to correct this right now, which was inclining me to feel, oh, I was feeling a little bit like urgency mm -hmm. right there to then speak to her and say like, hey, that's not how we react. Mm. Have a bit of a, like a correctional tone with it. But out of a reaction. Out of a, re out of a reaction, right? But feeling that sensation and knowing that what I wanted ultimately was for her to learn how to zip up the bag a little bit better in the, fu in the future, but also mm. not to perpetuate this frustration, I kind of paused and I just, I didn't even acknowledge the, the, the overreaction. Screen. All I did was say to her, are you trying to close that a little bit easier? And mm -hmm. it was like, the intention was like, it was more of this thought that I can help her, mm. right? I, there's a way that I can help her. And I understand why she's frustrated. And even, and, and that's a completely different thought of she's overreacting, mm. which was sending me down the urgency path. And then what I was doing is that now I am, pretty much the, correcting yourself, you shouldn't do that, pretty much saying, fix your emotions, mm -hmm. fix the things that are inside your circle, yeah. so to speak. But it, and maybe that could have worked, but it doesn't. No, it doesn't. And, and, no, it really doesn't work. And most of the time it does work here, folks. But we think it works. And then everybody escalates. Where it was just yeah. like, okay, first it was starting out, what is the goal that we're both seeking here? To close the lunch bag and do it peacefully. <laughs> yes. All right, I can will this good goal with you together. Like yeah. we can will this together. Right. Can I help you? Can I show you? And then she's open to it. And then it's just like, okay, is this complete? And it was done. We were done. She had a smile on her face uh -huh. afterwards. And you know what? She probably had a new wrinkle in her brain. Yeah. Too. Yeah, yeah. There you go. But that's how the circle thing worked for me today. So interesting. Okay, so... Yeah, so you separated the two, mm -hmm. and then you could be a better self-gift yeah. to her, which is why we're separating these two. I think a lot of people who are like very high relational, they're like, yeah, but isn't that rugged individualism? Isn't that like not help helpful? Well, John Paul II, Saint, Pope, Pope Saint? Pope Saint. Pope Saint, John Paul II, says differently, he says, we need to come to a place of self-possession and self-determinism so that we can be a more sincere gift of self-love. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And so in this case, we need to make this separation. It's a, it's a necessary place to make this separation so that you can go, oh, I need to own this. What's going on in my brain is this urgency to correct her mm -hmm. and to react from her reaction, mm -hmm. really. So you're really crossing over into her boundary. You're trying to go in there and mm -hmm. grab and change whatever emotion. she's going. Mm -hmm. But from this case, you go, okay, what is it? What is my intention? My intention is to help her close this bag mm -hmm. and to do it peacefully. And, and I teach her. think, yeah. and I think I could do that. I think we can do this from a calmer place. If mm -hmm. I own this and I don't react. Yeah, and which harkens back to really the intention here. Yeah. Getting, getting, starting with the work at like, what is the intention of this val of this of this boundary. And part of that is like, what is the value that you're seeking to preserve or preserve, seeking to yeah. reverence by Peace. putting this boundary in place? <laughs> Peace. Yeah. A morning without many screams. Scream, yeah, avoiding tears, but even also, tantrums. even if it screams, not escalating the screaming, right? Like yeah. let's pause. Even it, even if it screams some distancing language. Oh, there. I didn't say it. Did I? <laughs> you did. <laughs> oh my gosh. What I meant is sorry, even Angela. if there are screams. There we go. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Oh. Oh boy. I did not just call my child in it. Maybe I did. I don't know. Okay. Language. So all right, another do. do what number are we on? Number five. Number five. Do determine what the consequence will be if the boundary is crossed. So this is like with other consenting adults. Okay. Like 
I think a lot of times we try to reason with people under the age of reason to <laughs> all the parents out there mm-hmm. um, and understand what their capacity is because it's not very loving to to like demand something that they're not capable yes, of giving. Right. Yeah. But if this is to another adult, hey, if you continue to do this, I'm going to do this. Notice it's not if you do this, this is going to happen to you. It's if you do this, I'm going to own my thoughts and my actions. I'm going to go journal. I'm going to go just leave the room because when this happens, I start to Mm -hmm. ruminate on something. And I know that about myself. And so... I'm going to, I'm going to do this thing. Yeah. I am going to, and think of that action there. It's like, I reverence my interior life. I Mm -hmm. reverence my thought life, my emotional life, because it's the beginning of my behaviors and how I show up in the world and my habits and my virtuous or vicious habits. So all of that, I reverence this. I want to preserve this. And so I am putting the boundaries in place, even knowing my limitations, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, knowing my habitual inclinations to maybe go vicious or, you know, hyper angry or defensive, Mm -hmm. knowing that about myself, I'm putting this boundary in place to kind of be merciful on myself, but also be merciful on, on other people around me so that we can preserve a a loving disposition Mm -hmm. in my own interior life. Right. And I know, and and it's, it's not saying that you're causing this, but I know where I can go. And it's just, I I think there's a, there's a self-awareness and a humility yeah. In that type of boundary setting. Well, also, I think that's a really important point. Like, I know that you're not maliciously causing this. Like, mm-hmm. I, I know that you, this is, this may be just a habit of yours. Mm-hmm. Notice there's just like a lack of blame there. Mm-hmm. It's not like when you do this, I'm blaming you for my emotions. Mm-hmm. It's, hey, you do this thing, my mind goes here. Mm-hmm. And I just, I wanted to let you know that. So Mm -hmm. you can make a free will choice, but also when you do this, I'm going to remove myself from this, from this space. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. And we even do that with, with work, right? Mm -hmm. We we need to have our focus work and I'm, I've got, I know that I have a a, a giftedness in the area of focus where I can break concentration on something and go Mm -hmm. back to it much easier than you're able to do it. And so I can sit in a room and have stuff going on near nearby and I can still accomplish what I need to get done. You need some different conditions. Yes. And mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with that. Doesn't mean yeah. that you're less than or anything. It's just because it, it just that's that is what she knows that she needs. Mm-hmm. And so I'm not surprised anymore when the door is locked to the bedroom where she's doing some work Mm -hmm. and it it's nothing personal at that point it's like okay this is just a boundary that she needs uh but yeah so i i i think that's yeah that's it yeah okay then that'd be more than um do stick to the consequence and i think this is a lot of people will go well i set the boundary so fixed everything right no you have to actually follow through with the consequence Mm -hmm. (laughs) you have to actually Go lock the door or remove yourself or whatever the, the consequence is that you decide it is. Yeah. It's like you can have the kids mm-hmm. over to play with Avila, but I am going to lock the door mm-hmm. and I am going to ask, you know, that you, you preserve, you preserve the space or, you know, Aaron, there's been times where she's just like, no, we can't have not the kids over here at mm-hmm. the house because this is the place. And so it's like reinforcing the, but it's re- reinforcing the boundary to protect something that we're both willing to protect together, mm-hmm. right? And saying, no, Matt, we're, this, is, this is us both working together to get my work done. We mm-hmm. both benefit in that area. I, I'm, I'm inviting you to, to help me create this, the ideal space for this as mm-hmm. best we can. And I think that's, that, again, that, that's, now you're, you're, setting, you're setting the boundary, but you're sharing the intention and you're sharing the goal yeah. of that boundary. And if the person's yes. willing to share that goal with you, now we can. Now it's something they can mutually, freely choose to which, uphold with you. Yeah, which shows why it's so important for you to have an intention or yes. a reason, like a, like solidified, a crystallized like intention and reason. Like I'm doing this because of this, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and then do share the boundary only if it's relevant. Don't go around like telling random people your boundaries. Like that's kind of weird so weird um but like and and do it with love like do it with you it's not coming from a place of blame but from a place of being like hey i want to preserve this thing whatever it is Mm -hmm. 
here's why and then here's what i'm going to do to preserve that i would love for you to like to uh, to really choose to assist me on that yeah i mean i i I think if i think of like who's got a vested interest in this boundary being upheld Mm -hmm. those are the people that you share it with because when you're putting a boundary it's to preserve something of value and if they have a shared value in that same thing then Mm -hmm. it's it really is an opportunity for them to to show up lovingly right to will that good that common good Mm -hmm. together with you i mean and then there it's the foundations john paul ii talks about this being the foundation of a loving relationship are two or more people willing the same common good together freely yeah yeah and what i love about creating boundaries even with friendships with relationships with um marriages is there is an authenticity that has Mm -hmm. to take place. There's a humility, there's patience. There's also like the person who's creating the boundary needs to get creative in the way that they speak to the person and need to always kind of lean back on love. Like what, how would love say this out loud? How would Jesus say this boundary out loud? Mm -hmm. And how would he go forth? I mean, like, I know it's like, it's kind of, not cheesy because I always fall back on this, but what would Jesus do? Mm-hmm. How would Jesus create a boundary here? Yeah, it's with consideration of how the person receives information. Yep. You know, how they think. And it's not and again, we and can't man, we can't manage their emotions. That's theirs to do, but we can uh we can be just gentle and yeah. merciful in the way that we communicate these things. And so it's not like you're gonna, you know, find, Please, yeah, don't you know, weaponize create a manifesto this. and just Please don't weaponize. Passively aggressive. Passive um, aggressively. Yes. Don't sure. weaponize um, boundaries. Mm-hmm. That's my first don't. I'm adding that in. Okay. So now we're going into the other seven don'ts. Yeah. Okay. Seven don'ts. All right. Where do we start? Don't confuse ultimatums with boundaries. Mm-hmm. The main distinction between an ultimatum and boundaries is respect of one's own free will and the other's free will. Okay. Boundaries respect your own free will and the thing that you are reverencing thing that you are protecting and the other person's free will ultimatums do not do that ultimatums kind of insinuate force there's a coercion a force mo- coercion man- yes manipulation like uh, uh threats even and attempts to control the other person would you say like a boundary would be when you do this, I'm going to do this. And an ultimatum was, would be, if you do this, I'm going to do this to you. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. Or I'm going to take this from you. Yes. Uh, um, you it, are going to feel this pain. Yes. And it's, it's a little bit more. And also, it's not letting the person make the choice. Mm-hmm. You know, like John Paul II mm-hmm. oh, would always say that to all the people in, in the confessionals. You must choose. Ultimately, you must choose. And it doesn't mean that making a boundary is easy. Sometimes you might be sad. You might feel sad if the person doesn't choose what you kind of want them to choose, right? Mm -hmm. But that's, once again, you doing your own work and not like putting that on them. And it also doesn't mean that a secondary effect of putting the boundary in place may not be the other person experiencing some discomfort or Mm -hmm. pain, right? So say, for example, if if I said... Hey, Aaron, if you talk to me like that, if you raise your voice, I am going to leave the room. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's it. Like the intention is just communicating. This is what I'm going to do if you raise your voice and you talk and you and you uh, and you yell at me like that. Um, But she may feel like the discomfort of me walking away or her not being able to like the the disconnection Mm -hmm. that's there. But that's not the intention. It's not meant to be a punishing action. Mm -hmm. It's just saying I am going to protect what's valuable to me dignity. and yeah. my my own dignity. I'm just gonna that's that's all this is. Mm-hmm. All right. And then and then that that's and then you get to choose how, how you want to respond, but this is just how I'm gonna act. Yeah. That's it. There's something that's that's very neutral about that, but check your intention. I mean, because here's the thing, like we it's and that and this is and this is where we can grow in our own boundaries because mm-hmm. we may find that there's a little bit of a yeah, I gotcha. That's there too. Mm. And that again is revealing our work to do. Mm-hmm. But don't just say that like maybe if you've got a little bit of I'm um, a little bit of Schadenfreude, right? Mm-hmm. That that you know enjoying somebody else's misery mm-hmm. um, along with protecting your boundary. 
means don't put boundaries in place or don't trust that this boundary is a good boundary, but mm. just recognize, okay, like, yeah, I, if you are feeling some sort of a satisfaction and, you know, the other person's natural discomfort yeah. that you're sending that boundary, just check that, right? Bring that to the Lord. Yeah. Journal on it. Journal on it. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we have the journal. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good. Cool. Um, What's next? Number two, don't expect it to be easy. Like you're learning and practicing a new skill. If you have not been somebody who has created boundaries, if this is uncomfortable for you, and especially following through with the consequences of the boundaries, just give yourself that learning curve time and that learning curve tension. Like allow it to be mm -hmm. tense. I remember when I first read the book Boundaries uh, by Henry Cloud and Townsend. Townsend. Yeah. And I was working at the salon and it was helpful because, you know, you're in the service industry and it's okay to kind of like start to create boundaries, not like, you know, weaponizing it and like mm -hmm. overusing it. But some people come in and they demand a lot. And for you to be able to say, I can't give that to you is a boundary. Mm -hmm. Like it's, you're demanding something. I have of jet me. black hair, make me bleach blonde. Yes. Right. In and an also hour. like, and also your hair will fall out. So, you know, I just want to let you know the consequences kind of as well. Boundary. Not like, but it's, it's really helpful for you to understand boundaries. Anyway, when I was learning this work, I, I remember reading in the book, it was just like, allow for it to feel uncomfortable. Just mm -hmm. allow it, allow it to feel wonky and weird. Um, and just do your own work as you're going through this. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, really helpful for people to know. I think everybody thinks if I set boundaries, all things will be magical. N no, it's going to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Number three, don't be shocked or get mad when people resist your boundaries. Mm -hmm. So if you are in the habit of not creating boundaries of, of saying being a yes person, saying yes to everybody all the time and people get frustrated or even mad, just know that that could be, like a reaction and this was a this was a really helpful thing for me even discerning my relationships mm. um at first i want to get mad like if somebody at first kind of got mad or frustrated i wouldn't hold it against them i'd be like i understand completely understand like i would be mad too if somebody would always be watching my children and then all of a sudden they say no right like i'd be like mm -hmm. ah gotta go find a babysitter or whatever mm -hmm. Um, and even if they kind of got mad at me, I would still kind of understand it. But if they held on to that anger and if they continued every time I would say no, they just continued to do that. It started to become clear to me, oh, this person and I have very different values and very different boundaries. And it allowed me to kind of love that person where they're at, but also understand I don't know if I want to be as close with this person mm -hmm. as maybe I've been in the past because we value very different things. It doesn't mean I'm not, I don't love them anymore, but it's like maybe I need to kind of find people who respect my boundaries. So it was like um, a diagnostic mm -hmm. tool to be like, what friends respect boundaries? Yeah, and it's, <laughs> it's, in some ways it's easier when you have friends and it's a little bit more challenging when it's family. Yes. We don't get to pick our family, and mm -hmm. and and uh, I I know I know of people that you know that are in our our Catholic Coaching Foundations yep. course that have you know spoken about sharing boundaries, putting boundaries down with their with their siblings before, and their spouses, you know, and it's just it, mm -hmm. there's there's some challenges that come from that where where it's it's a continual reinforcement, and so how how do you how do you ha maintain that boundary mm -hmm. in a way that is that is um. Um, not closing the door to the relationship, right? Yeah. Boundaries, I think there's, there's great, they're, they're protecting things, but we don't want to just have walls with no gates, right? Mm. Uh, it's good to have gates and those boundaries. And those are the things where it's like, Hey, and we can, we can connect here. We can be in relationship. You can come through this gates mm -hmm. under these conditions, but like, this is my property. This is my interior life. This is what I value. And this is, I, I let people in that value the same things. I think really the antidote to this is being able to, when you're reinforcing boundaries with people that are close to you, is really saying, this is why I'm doing this. Giving them the why. This is what I want to preserve. Yes. And then it's an invitation 
to preserve the thing that that you love. Usually, uh, they value that same thing. Yeah, you might be surprised. A lot of times, it's for the very sake of the relationship. Yeah, because like if you're, let's just say you're a yes person and you say yes all the time, like and you don't want to be saying yes. Let's just say the other person realizes that and they go wait, like how much of this time have you been like faking this? Like mm -hmm. how many, like we, I haven't even been having a real relationship with you. I've been having a relationship with this like yes person. Mm -hmm. With a big mask on yeah. face. Yeah, so like if that person is really, I think, willing your greatest good, mm -hmm. this gives them the opportunity to really love you and to respect even the relationship and make it more of an authentic relationship. Yep. Yeah, goes back to the intention, always yes. the intention, what's the goal, the boundary that I'm putting in place is here because I want to preserve yeah. this. Yeah, but going back to this, don't be shocked or mad about this, like for a long period of time, just kind of go into a place of understanding, be like, I get it. Yeah, totally. But also don't be shocked when after you put the boundary in place, they actually change their behavior and they conform to your boundary. Yes. I, or I, they respect you or more. They really, right. Or they come back and they apologize and they mm -hmm. say, I mean, it's this is something I, I remember ha having with a friend mm -hmm. and it was very painful putting a boundary in place. And then later on, uh, there was like a, a moment of reconciliation where he, he came and he apologized. Mm. And, and it really, we that was really when we started to become friends mm. at that point. And it was a beautiful thing. And it just, and it, but, I, but I was able to communicate the boundary with the intention behind it. And that was an intention that he desired as well. Yeah. Yeah. Naturally. Yeah. Um, okay. Number four, don't let the reason for creating the boundary be operating out of the premise that your emotional freedom and your responsibility is somehow the other person's responsibility. So what does this mean? We're back in our circles. Yes. Stick people in their circles. Right, right. This person did this thing, so we're back in our circles. The person in their behavior or action line, it's in their circle, right? You are thinking that their action equals your emotion. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they did this thing, and I feel this way. My daughter yelled, I feel urgency. Yes, okay. The problem with that is you leave out a very important hinge point, which is? Your thought. Your thought that's creating the urgency. Mm -hmm. And that thought was? That thought was, I need to correct this now for me. Okay, great example right there. So mm -hmm. she screams. I need to correct this now. Urgency yes. inclined to scold her for yes. yelling and overreacting. Yes. I see a lot of people create boundaries out of this premise of thinking that person's actions create my emotions. Yeah, and even like what I was doing, think of, I was inclined to mm -hmm. scold her and correct her for overreacting. That's me trying to change her emotions so that she stops screaming so I have permission not to feel urgency anymore, which mm -hmm. is uncomfortable to me. Yeah. Now but I'm the gonna, goal there is I think I, I want to get into a relationship too. There's a connection. It's yes. like this is disrupting the connection. Right. So I think a lot of people go to the extreme place when we when we kind of bring this up and we go, yeah, but they go, yeah, but what if somebody comes up and punches you in the face mm -hmm. and your reaction is like you feel angry about that. Mm -hmm. Great. You can feel anger. That's fine own where the anger is coming from. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if they are punching you in the face. What are you thinking? Your thought might be, I can't believe they did that and I feel angry. Mm -hmm. Just understand what your thought is that's creating the emotion. That thought might be prudent. That thought might be true. It might be aligned with truth. All we are saying is own your thoughts. Mm -hmm. and say, yes, I rechoose that thought, right? Mm -hmm. So like somebody comes and punches you in the face, you get angry and you remove yourself. That's what you do. Or you punch them back. Or you punch them back. You mm -hmm. get angry and you respond and you punch them back. You see where my head goes. Either <laughs> way, either way, it's a, it's a terrible thing that happened. We're not saying you're wrong for saying, I can't believe they did that or thinking that and feeling angry. But what we're saying is know where that is anger is coming from know where that emotion is coming from and own it mm -hmm. and it might be aligned with truth 
great, but own it. At least know what it, where it's coming mm-hmm. from. Let it be conscious. Yes. Free so, and don't create your boundaries out of this under this belief that other people's actions create my emotions. I'm going to say it again and again. And the other one that comes right after that, number, number? five, right. I wrote it right here, actually, because I, okay. I added this one. You. Don't think that you have more power over other people's emotions than you actually do. So we just gave it from the one direction that person's um, behaviors create my, my mm-hmm. emotions. Also, don't think that you have power over other people's emotions because they are choosing their thoughts and they are thinking something. Aaron, I mean, they're, they're feeling something. Okay, so, so where, does, where does influence play in here? Because mm-hmm. I, I can create conditions to, like, and arguably I did that this morning, yeah. right? Where I just said, okay, I, 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 I didn't just walk away from Avil and let her do, deal with her emotions, but I said, okay, thought, what mm-hmm. can I do? I can show her how to zip the, the lunch bag closed. Mm-hmm. Like, arguably that's something where I was influencing or I was operating in freedom mm-hmm. and she allowed me to help her. Mm-hmm. And because of that, you know, she zipped it closed and then there, were, there was an affective change. There was a, a smile on her face mm-hmm. and a look of pride of having yeah. reached the goal. How, like, but that seems like I, I kind of, like, I influenced her emotionally, right? Yeah, and we have a whole podcast on this. We talk about locus of control, like what's okay. in your locus of control, what's outside of your locus of control, and then the area of influence. But we always say that, what first needs to happen before you go in and you're re, like you're kind of reacting and trying to influence mm-hmm. the person from that place of reaction and powerlessness versus going, oh, what can I own here and how can I respond in love and right. charity? And I think this is really where virtue comes in. Like, mm-hmm. like because it's not virtuous just to react. Right. You know? Right. And, and that actually brings us to the next one but i want to i want to pause here and say okay number five you don't have more power over and this more power than you don't have the power that you think you have over other people's emotions okay really great intentions i hear people say this all the time i um i don't want them to feel bad Mm -hmm. i hear parents say this about their children and i i'm like Mm -hmm. i get it Yes, we want to protect them from everything and we don't want them to feel bad. We don't want them to feel their emotions. Um, And this is the motto of the people pleaser. This is the motto of the person who isn't really being known and seen in a relationship because they have that people pleaser mask on. Mm -hmm. And you don't have that power. I'm sorry, your kid is going to feel bad. They're going to have crazy thoughts and not crazy, but like they're going to have not great thoughts and it's going to lead to disappointing emotions and and what a beautiful place for them to be in within your care when they are experiencing that yeah. versus out in the world by themselves because they've been sheltered their whole life. You know what a natural consequence is from acknowledging these boundaries? You hold the space. Yeah. for other people's emotions. You don't and when we say holding the space, the opposite of holding the space is I need to get them out of this emotion. Like we were going to do this morning. I was going to do th- yeah. ex- Exactly. Like, that's the opposite. Of, but just allowing it. And, and allowance doesn't mean that you are um, c- condoning it mm-hmm. or that you are, are tacitly approving it. But rather, it's just allow it to be, right? And and just sit with the person there. And that that act of, of allowing the person to be is communicates that regardless of where you are, whatever you're feeling, whatever you're doing, I, I, I love you still. Yeah. That is something that's very powerful because of, oftentimes when you feel those emotions, there's also like the shame that can get piled up on top of yep. it. I'm, I'm ashamed that I'm so frustrated right now for yeah. not being able to, to zip the bag. And it's just like, okay, no, like mm-hmm. I, this, is, this isn't something that I need to be, even my frustration isn't something that I need mm-hmm. to be afraid of. Mm. Yeah. 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 It's a beautiful life lesson too. Like, and I just like the idea of being like, I want my, my daughter to feel, I, it feels awful to say this, but like, I want her to feel the bad emotions when she's here Mm -hmm. and we can say, Hey, this is like how we kind of work through this. This Mm -hmm. is how 
Like this is nothing to be afraid of. This is something that we can manage mm -hmm. eventually when you hit the age of reason. But like it's mm -hmm. nothing to be afraid of. Yep. Um, okay. Six. Six. Don't react, respond. I looked up the definitions of the mm -hmm. word react. The word react means to exert as a thing acted upon. I always like to, like if you are being acted upon, you're kind of like a victim, right? Like mm -hmm. something is acting upon you. I'm not saying that you're not, but mm -hmm. you to exert the opposite action upon the agent that's acting upon you. Okay. So somebody's pushing me, I push back. It's retaliation. Okay. Pretty much. Got it. Yeah. So it's like I'm doing the opposite thing or maybe even the same thing, but I'm like, I'm exerting energy back to whatever this thing that's acting upon. Yeah. Me. The funny thing is about reaction is you often end up mirroring the same yeah. sin back to the other person, right? <laughs> yes. They're yelling at me and I'm going to yell back at them so that they stop yelling. But now I'm starting the cycle of yelling, right? Yes. And so and that time, now it's my fault. I yes. got to own that. You're yelling the word stop yelling. <laughs> It's irony. <laughs> or you're punching the person back in the face, right? Like yeah, it's kind yeah, yeah. of this, it's a retaliation. But what that, what it implies is that going back to what we were just talking about, it, it implies that this person's actions has more, more control over you than, than you do. That, that's what, what the premise is. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, I need to, I need to push back. I need to, now, obviously we're not talking about an extreme example where it's like, thank you. If somebody is like being beaten, like they like punch them in the face out of self-defense and then they run away. Right. Yeah. Like, we're or, not or talking just about like, Or that. somebody's shooting at you and you have a yeah. gun, don't shoot back, but try to like say, Hey, Hey, what? Like, let's, let's talk about this. Like mm -hmm. sometimes like when it comes down to life preservation, there's a reason why God has hardwired us with this little amygdala fight, flight, or freeze response. It doesn't really, it's not really subordinate to reason at yeah. that point. That is there for self-preservation. Yeah. Yeah, but when we're talking about emotional reaction, mm -hmm. It's not appropriate to fight, flight, or freeze when it's not really a life or death situation. Correct. Yeah. But we can, but when we react, we're giving our power and our responsibility over right. to that person, that, that acting agent mm -hmm. upon us. Um, respond, respond yeah. is to make an answer, give a reply in words. When we respond, we are taking ownership back. So we go, this thing may be acting upon me right now. What is my response to this? And what I love about this is that it's that recollection of you returning back to your little stick figure circle and going, how do I want to respond to this? Mm -hmm. Like, because I get to choose how I want to respond to this. We can't choose what happens to us. We can choose how we respond. You know what helps me respond? I always like to, to think to myself, what might this person being desire, be desiring through this action? Mm. What might their goal be? Mm. And sometimes the response is literally just to ask them that. What, what are you hoping this is going to accomplish? Mm -hmm. All right, I see you doing this. What's, to paint me a picture of, of, of what perfect looks like for you. What are you mm -hmm. trying to get to? And, and that's something where it's just like, you know, a lot of the time, folks, we do things in a completely disordered way, but we have a very ordered intention at mm -hmm. the end of it. And so it's just getting clear on what that, and, and for what, on what that intention is, I think is a really good place of, of uh, it's, it's a good first step in responding mm -hmm. versus reacting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and maybe you're not there yet, mm -hmm. but, and maybe you could just go, I get to own my response to this. Mm -hmm. And that's the sentence that you say in your head. Like yeah. when something you start to feel, all the emotions bubble up. All right, how do I want to respond to this? Mm -hmm. I get to choose that. Like they do their thing, they're in their own bubble, mm -hmm. and then I get to choose what my response is. Um, and finally, don't set boundaries. Setting boundaries is an action. It's a decision that we make. Don't set them from a place of fear, anger, or self-protection. All right. So that's number seven. Yes. This is the final one. Don't set boundaries from fear, anger, and self-protection. Remember, we talked about the cognitive behavioral model mm -hmm. where we go, our thoughts lead to our emotions, which lead to our actions. So that emotions, those emotions 
are leading to, are inclining us to act, Mm -hmm. are inclining us to make a decision, like set a boundary. Look back, what is the emotion that's driving this action, this decision? Is it anger? Is it fear? Is it retaliation? Is it self, like kind of an indulgent Mm self-protection? And what I want to like clarify what that is. It's like this kind of like, I'm recoiling because I don't know what to do right now. Like you feel out of control a little bit. Yeah. Um, versus I'm intentionally protecting this thing that I hold of value. Yeah. And that, and that is the, the, the main distinction. So if you're wondering like, okay, how do I know if I'm setting it out of fear or setting it out of love? Mm-hmm. It has to do with, are you trying to avoid an evil? If you're trying to avoid a, a perceived evil, that's a fear response, okay? If I don't set this boundary, then this evil is going to befall me, mm-hmm. okay? But if you're doing it out of love, you're saying, I am putting this boundary in place to preserve or protect this thing that's important to me. It's completely different emotion that comes from mm. that. Now we're looking at a positive angle of this. It's like, this is what I want to protect. And what I love about that is you get to invite the person to protect that with you, the, the person that you're laying, setting that boundary with, whether it's your mother-in-law or mm-hmm. your wife or your spouse or boyfriend, girlfriend, you get to inv- say, this is something I value. Will you protect this with me? Would you, do you share that same value? Will you, are you willing to protect it with me? That's why I'm putting this in place versus, I mean, the, when, when you set a boundary in fear, somebody can just come back and say, well, that's not a rational fear. Mm. like you you shouldn't be afraid of something like that and they're just like no i I disagree Mm -hmm. like you're acting irrationally that's not really but when you say no i'm doing this because this is what i love i think you're going to have a lot yeah a a better a better time reinforcing it's a difference between freedom from fear Mm -hmm. and freedom to love yes so it's the freedom from or freedom to so like freedom to create or maximize this relationship. Mm -hmm. Freedom to have a way more authentic relationship or a real relationship. Freedom to, for me to grow Mm -hmm. and for you to go grow. And, and this is why I'm setting this boundary versus freedom from fear that I'm hurting somebody else. Freedom from fear that I'm creating this person's emotions and they don't have that. I'm going to feel an emotion by thinking an optional thought. (laughs) Right. Freedom from, yeah, like being isolated, freedom from all of the, and so that's, I I think a really helpful distinction is the freedom from or freedom to. Yeah. I love it. Aaron, great notes. Aaron curated this thing. Thanks. I'm stoked. And we're going to, next week, we're going to have a podcast that's kind of dovetails off of this. It's how to make your trolls your teachers, right? So so we get, maybe you're a parent and you've got kids that are getting bullied at school, right? Or online bullying. Maybe you got an online business and people are trolling you and and it's kind of like a a, a new phenomenon, but just a Mm -hmm. variation on something that's, you know, been around for a long time. People, people poking, you know, poking fun at, at the the, the splinters in your eye. Yeah, it's really helpful to know boundaries mm-hmm. going into to this type of work. So because they can actually be your greatest teachers yes. here. And and, and yeah, guys, I'm if you're listening to, to our podcast, we ask you to share it. It's like share it with people, like a friend of yours. Like write a oh, we were just talking about boundaries. Send this to them and write a review. And if you didn't check us out yet, come over to our YouTube channel. We have a lot of extra little coaching tips there mm-hmm. and all that stuff. And su- subscribe. That would be really great. Uh, huge help for us. And check out the Academy. If it's something that you want to like look into, it's been kind of on your heart to like go check it out. Check it out for a month. Yeah. See if you like it. If it works for you, we'd love to have you. Wonderful community over there. And we really dive much deeper into this work that we give to you on that podcast. But thank you so much for sticking around here today. Hope this helps and we'll see you next week. Yeah, have a blessed Advent. Christmas is around the corner.